Okay, the last section we're going to look at is health insurance. Um, for the first quarter, we are 20% over budget. Our claims have come in higher than we expected. I think our health insurance plan is on a calendar year basis, so we're still seeing the effect of some of those large claims that we talked about last fiscal year. They're still coming through to this first quarter of the new fiscal year. But again, we're seeing the ever-increasing cost of health care impacting our budgets, so we're trying to budget for that, but it's also, it, I mean, it's, it's difficult to budget for because it keeps going up, and we keep seeing these large claims come through. We are going out for an RFP this year on new health insurance services, and we should have that new plan in place by 1-1 of 21, so we're hoping to get some savings there. We're going to continue to monitor this and make sure that we address it in the upcoming budget cycle. So we are over budget, but looking through January, we're not we're down to just 13% over budget instead of 20% over budget going forward. And so during this RFP that Matt referenced, we will be bidding both uh, health insurance and pharmaceutical. So combined, uh, those two are a, a massive have a massive uh, impact on uh, the performance. Yes, sir. And we anticipate late May that to have a recommendation for council that would be effective January of 21. Questions? I had a question back actually on the drainage, um, Mr. City Manager, on uh, if we could get a report on just uh, an overview of where we have some of the most difficult drainage issues in the city and the upcoming projects. This is part of what that assessment is okay. for, is to deal with those and to to see where, um, and I'm sure we've reviewed it, but if you don't mind to just pull that together to see kind of what's coming up in the short term. and. So the drainage fee that we have right now is designed specifically to address a handful, a very, a very finite amount of specified projects. It does not address or alleviate fund, uh, flooding, mm -hmm. <laughs> funding and flooding, uh, but it does not alleviate all the flooding challenges we have with uh, our streets being used as drainage channels. But uh, we will definitely give you a presentation on what our drainage fee is designed to address and also point out some uh, needed projects that are not funded through our current drainage fee, uh, some of the most uh, pressing of those. Now, that won't be an exhaustive list, but it will be some of the most telling or, or pressing challenges that are not addressed through our current drainage fee. But I think the biggest takeaway is the drainage fee is designed to address a few, a handful of very specific, significant drainage problems. So we'll, we'll point out both what we're funding and what, we're, what, what we have yet to fund that are, that are still serious problems. Okay, that, that would be great. Thank you. Matt, can we talk about, go back to that slide on health insurance, please? There you go. Uh, I'm nervous that that claims number is quite a large percentage over. So what, let's just talk for a minute about, does this come out of general fund dollars? It's an internal service fund, so your health insurance, the general fund pays into that. So you have a health insurance fund with a pretty healthy reserve, so if we did have a million dollars if it stayed that way through the um, the whole year. You have reserves to cover that. Um, last year when we did our analysis, what we saw was our regular claims that were non-large claims were coming in flat from the prior year. Where we saw our increase is we were experiencing some significant large claims. So that's exactly where our increase is. We are just now closing February. Let us go back and look at the claims for February and we'll get you an update through February. Do you have that information? Um, we met with our healthcare consultant um, last week, I believe, and it was looking through January. And what they were seeing in the trend through January was that our ph pharmaceutical costs were actually down or about flat with where they were from January of 2019. And they said that the way pharmaceuticals work is those are almost instant coming through for payment through the plan where the healthcare claims kind of have a little bit of a lag. They said that they trend very close together. So they said that was a good sign that we were seeing those pharmaceuticals coming in fa fairly flat to where we were paying those out back in January of 2019. So even though we did experience what seemed to be a pretty large increase in that first quarter of our fiscal year, things were looking much better as of January and seemed to be starting out the calendar year, which is the plan year for um, our health care plan. It looked like it was starting off on track, fairly similar to the year before, so there weren't concerns. 
The biggest challenge this past year were, were as Michelle mentioned and as Matt mentioned, those um, large claims. And we saw, we saw a significant amount of our spend in those large claims and saw significantly more than what we had in probably the last two or three years. Okay, so there's reserves to cover this shortfall. Yes, yes. and we're going to continue to monitor it. Well, if we see that that is going to roll into this year, that we look like we're going to be over what we budgeted, we're going to roll that into your budget, into your revised estimate number, and as we do your projection for next year, we're going to have taken that into consideration, making sure our reserves are still healthy mm -hmm. and making sure our rates are set accordingly. So that would encompass, sorry, Jared, that would encompass replenishing those reserves. Right as well as a larger number recognizing this trend. Yeah, if it's continuing to trend up, uh -huh. your budget for next year will be based on a higher trend. Okay, Jared, did you have a comment? Well, I was just gonna say, uh, Michelle said we have a healthy reserve and, and we have uh, the, the exact recommended reserve that we're supposed to have. It's just a big budget line. So that, that means that we have a lot of money put into reserve there to be able to cover overages because it is such a big, I mean, it's almost a $20 million line item in most years. So and it fluctuates. Yeah, it fluctuates, uh, but but it's it's definitely one of the biggest things that we spend in the general fund is is health insurance. Uh, as we go into next year's budget and plan for next year's budget, if we have dipped into that reserve at the end of the fiscal year, and it's possible that we that we can have rec that we can recover through the last of the year, I'm not holding my breath because large health insurance claims uh, are abnormal, uh, especially the number that we've had so far. Uh, but uh, we will build the. Uh, pricing for our health insurance to reimburse or re refill that reserve fund. And that's going to touch not only the city, but also the employees, because the employees have a share in paying for that uh, health insurance fund. And one other thing as a reminder, we had gone over this during um, the audit committee presentation of our financial statements at September 30th. We actually ended last year um, with um, better reserves than what we had anticipated. There was an adjustment made related to a change in an accounting estimate, and it actually um, was to the good. And um, so we are, we were sitting pretty good with our reserves at the end of the year, better than what we had anticipated during budget time last year. And I know that we had talked about in that RFP for <clears throat> um, insurance working in a wellness component. That's correct. Might that's not one. be related necessarily to these larger claims, but no. I just think, you know, if we're looking at a trend of this increasing, then I think wellness dollars are well spent toward um, saving us claim dollars and making us healthier. And that is, that is part of that RFP that we're okay. going through. We've included the wellness. That's something we've talked about. Our focus for the last several years has been on the um, actual insurance network and claims, but we do know that in, unless we get that wellness piece in, it's going to be more difficult to adjust those trends. Okay. And, and just a reminder, you can see it on the graph here, 2016 is when the city switched from the city negotiating networks to the Aetna contracting. You see it had a significant change to our claims, and even the 2015 is still the high um, as far as claims were concerned. Um, 2019, we saw a trend upward, but we d yet did not reach the same levels where we were in 2015. Okay, thank you. Do y'all have any more questions for Matt? Uh, just when we look at some of those past, it would be interesting when we look at the, the total number of claims, if we could get a number on the number of people we're covering Sure. On, on this chart, at least having yes. it down. So, so we're looking at apples and apples. Okay. It's like our 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 costs going up because we're covering more people. Okay. Is it the we could even get you a, a cost per covered life? Mm -hmm. too. Okay, that would be great. That'd okay, be great. we'll add that and we'll do that and send that out to council on Friday as well. Thank you. It's a good good change. 